My name is Edward Kimani. Today I'll show you how to use the IRA online portal for insurance agents. I assume that you know the requirements for registering as an insurance agent and for the sake of this tutorial that will be the assumption. Now I'll start by showing you how to send money to IRA. There are three methods to do that. The first one is by using M-Pesa. Once you go to your phone M-Pesa menu, you'll go and say pay bill. Now once you say pay bill, you'll be prompted to put the the business number of the organization you are sending money to. So IRA's pay bill number or business number is 830-300. If you are a new case or you are renewing a license, you will have uh, an existing file number. So that will be the account number that you input at that juncture. So this is the format that you put in that account number. So your file number starts with 05, then the middle number, which is your file number, and then the year of reference to your application. If you're a new agent and you don't have a file number, of course, you'll put in the ID number of the principal officer. Now, after sending that money, you'll get a confirmation SMS from IRA systems that the money has been transmitted to IRA. So that SMS confirmation will have a reference number that you need to note because you'll need that reference number as you go along with your application. So the second way of doing a cash transfer or making a payment to IRA is by doing a bank deposit. Bank deposit can be done by a direct transfer from your account, bank account to IRA's account, or the easiest way is to have the, to deposit cash into IRA's bank account. So the details for our bank are the name of the account is Insurance Regulatory Authority, the bank name is National Bank of Kenya, the branch is uh, Harambe Avenue. The branch code is 12003. The account number is 01003066888400. Once you deposit that money, you'll get a bank deposit slip. You need to scan that bank deposit slip and save that image of the slip in a movable memory or on your hard disk. It's by bulk payment. This mode of payment is normally used by insurance companies who want to pay for bulk agents. So as evidence of payment, you need to be uh, an agent with that insurance company and your name should appear in the list of their agents. Now there's another document that shows the evidence of that payment and they can distribute these two documents to their insurance agents who can again uh, use the same information to upload applications on their own. Now at that juncture, you will be able now to access our uh, portal. I'll show you how to now submit your application. Now the two links that gets you to that portal are www.online.ira.go.ke. The other link is www.ira.go.ke. The second link actually is a link to our website. So once you go to our website, you'll again click another link that will take you to the first link. So we shall use the first link because it will take you directly to that portal. So I'll copy this link, the text, and paste on my browser window. And hit enter. Here we go. So this is the IRA's portal. So at this point you'll be able to see on the left hand side is all about agents. Now the first link under agents is check my details. This link will enable you to log in and check the status of your license. Now this is used by agents who have already submitted their applications and they wish to check on the status of the applications. The application can either be accepted or rejected. Once it is rejected then the reasons for rejection are noted there and you can view them and respond to them accordingly. Now if the license has been approved then you'll be able to see when it was approved and you'll just give it a few days and it will be posted to your postal address. The second link is about renewal for registration. This link is used by agents who wish to make uh, a renewal for the current year. Now the same link can be used to endorse your license. Endorsement simply means doing uh, edits, like editing your name, your agency name, editing your postal address, or even adding insurance companies that you wish to represent. The third link is application for new registration. And this is the link that today will be um, the main part of this demonstration. 
So the, the fourth link is about endorsement of licenses. Currently we are using the renewal for registration for endorsing licenses, but ideally in future this will be the link to do all your endorsements. So I'll click on application for new registration and I take you through and show you how it works. So these are a list of the requirements that you need to have to be able to use the system as a new apl applicant or a new agency. So you'll click on this button and say, okay, the, the system will prompt you and it will open a profile page where you'll be able to submit your application. So the first item that you need to fill is the applicant's name. This is the name that will appear on your license. If you're an individual, then you'll put in your personal name. If it's a business name that you are using for your agency, then you'll put a valid and registered business name. This name is normally registered by the Registrar of Business Names at the Attorney General Chambers and you'll get a certificate for that. If it's a limited agency, then you'll get a certificate of incorporation and together with your memorandum and articles, I'll show you where you'll upload them. Now the name of the agency comes here. So I'll use the name of agency, I'll call it my insurance agency. Then the postal address, I'll put an, a valid postal address. Uh, for this sake, I'll put box that number, then the code and the town. Always remember to put the code, the postal code, and of course the town, because this is the address that IRA will use to dispatch your license via registered post. Now, uh, the third item is about agent type. So, the agent type in this demonstration is a partnership. It's a business name that has more than one partner. Uh, the year of registration for this purpose is 2013. My telephone number, I'll put uh, a number that will represent my telephone number. This can be your landline or your second mobile number. Then the mobile number has to be very actual. It will be a valid mobile number because you normally call to inquire about matters of registration and we might need to get in touch with you, you know, urgently. So we need a valid mobile number. The email address should also be valid because we normally send emails for notifications and updates about uh, IRA and the insurance industry. So it has to be a very valid email address. So this one, I'll, I use a demo email address that is not functional, but for you, it has to be functional. Now, the certificate of incorporation will be the document that I mentioned earlier. So for a business name that, that is a simple business name, it will be a certificate of business re registration. And for a limited uh, company or a limited agency, it will be the certificate of incorporation together with the memorandum and articles of association. Why we ask for the memorandum and articles of association for new agents is because you've never had those documents in your file. But for cases that have already submitted uh, those hard copies, then they can do without that. But they, they need to submit for us, I mean, they need to submit to us the certificate of incorporation. So I'll browse for the certificate of business name at this juncture, that is business name registration certificate. I'll uh, fix it there, sorry. Now I have browsed for it and it will attach as I go along. The name of my partners, I'll say partner number one, who is uh, a Kenyan. The principal officer can, or any other partner can be a Kenyan or an East African. So my principal officer, actually the first person will be the principal officer. I'll say yes. His ID number will be that. Then I'll browse for the copy of his ID. ID copy of the first partner, that is the principal officer. And then I'll click this button, add button, so that that record is attached on the application. The system will refresh, and as you can see, it has attached the certificate of business from the AG and it has attached the copy of ID of the principal officer. My second partner, I'll call partner number two, is uh, an East African this time, not a principal officer because a, an agency can have one principal officer at a time. I'll put in the passport number and I browse for the soft copy of the passport. I'll again click add so that that record is attached on the system. Now once the system refreshes, you'll see all the attachments are going well. Now I'll go and, re and uh, add insurance companies that I wish to operate with. I'll browse for Amaco here. 
attach certificate by insurer for Amaco. I will browse for the statement of business for Amaco. Browse for it and then I hit the add button so that those documents are attached. I'll let the system refresh and that will be attached. I can now add another insurance company. I will add the Jubilee. I'll browse for the state certificate by insurer for Jubilee and I'll also browse for the statement of business for Jubilee. As you can see, I have to hit the add button so that those documents can be attached and the system will refresh and attach accordingly. Now as you can see now, I can proceed the name of the partner. Number one, that is the principal officer appears there. I need to put in his profile, put in his date of birth, academic qualification, he can be a no level graduate. Uh, professional qualification, he's a COP holder. I'll scan for the COP copy, browse for it. Insurance experience, I can say he has five years of experience. Now, number six is not valid because he's a new agent. Number six, I'll say the other profession he does is marketing or castle marketing. You put the valid profession. Now, number seven, going on, those are objective questions where you can fill and you have to be very factual about this. In my case, that is okay for demonstration. At this point of putting your payment, you need to edit this figure and put the valid amount that you are paying. Of course, for a new agent, it's a thousand shillings. I paid by m -Pesa, so my m -Pesa reference code comes here. Actually, comes here in caps. So, the date of the transaction appears here. I'll show you how to attach a bank deposit slip. If you paid by bank and you need to now attach the bank slip, you need to select the option for bank. The system will tell you don't forget to attach the bank deposit slip which I'll browse by clicking on this button and say bank deposit slip and of course it has a serial number. The date is uh, okay with that and at this juncture I'll save all the information before I submit. Because for a new agent you need to save all the information before you submit. If you get it wrong at this juncture you'll have a lot of problems. The system will refresh and attach everything. Now as you can see I have been given a, an automatic reference number, my, actually my file number in future. So everything has been attached accordingly. You need to just browse through with your eyes and see that everything is correct. Any amendment that you need to make is best to be made at, the, at this juncture before you submit. It's a time to submit. But in case you have system problems, you're experiencing server timeouts or uh, website problems, you can always call these numbers down here and ask for computer support or any other officer who will be in a position to assist you. So the is good to go and now I'll hit the submit button and my submission will go to IRA for analysis and uh, approval. If I don't qualify, they'll notify me by email or they'll call me on my cell phone or my landline or they'll write a letter that might take much longer than you know calling me. So eventually I'll get a feedback. Now once you submit your application, the status down here will change to yes. So it shows that your submission has been done on this date at this time. So what you need to do now is to note a number that has been generated by the system called online reference number. So this is a number that you need to, to write down somewhere because it's a number that you can always track your application if it happens not to get on well. So for new applicants, uh, IRA will allow up to 14 days as per their service charter and by that time you should get your license. So thank you and all the best.